Duskform Lycanroc is making its Pokemon Go debut during the Lustrous Odyssey event, and in this video I will be going through all of the event details, event tips, Pokemon worth catching, raids worth raiding, and more. The event runs from January 6th at 10am until January 10th at 8pm local time. So starting with this event, some Rockruff that trainers hatch or encounter will have the chance of evolving into the Dusk form of Lycanroc instead of the midday or the midnight forms. So what this means is that any Rockruff that you currently have won't be able to evolve into the Dusk form of Lycanroc, and so you will need to encounter or hatch new Rockruff from the 6th of January onwards, and these Rockruff will have a chance to have the option to evolve into the new Dusk form. The bonuses for the event will be increased frequency of your buddy Pokemon Pokemon bring you presents and souvenirs. Your buddy Pokemon will spend more time out on the map after being fed berries and poffins. And Rockruff hatched from Adventure Singer eggs will have a chance to evolve into the Dusk form Lycanroc. So the wild encounters for the event will be Ghastly, Eevee, Spinarak, Sunkern, Teddy Ursa, Lunatone, Solrock, Young Goose, Fomantis, Morlul, and Rare Spawns Espeon and Umbreon. When it comes to the raids, in one star raids we have Hisuian Growlithe, Rhyhorn, Hisuian Sneasel, and Rockruff. In three star raids will be Lapras, Aerodactyl, Hisuian Bravery and Weirdeer, and in 5 star raids will be either Buzzwall, Zerkitry or Feromosa depending on the region that you're in. Buzzwall is available in the Americas and Greenland, Zerkitry will be available in the Asia Pacific region, and Feromosa is available in Europe, the Middle East, Africa and India. So these raid bosses are region locked, but if you want the ones that are outside of your region you can remote raid them. So these Ultra Beasts will be in raids up until January 10th at 10am, and then taking over after them will be Therian Tornadus which will know its legacy move Bleak Wind Storm for the first time in Pokemon Go. In Mega Raids will be Mega Ampharos up until January 10th at 10am and then Mega Medicham will take over. Hatching from 2km and 7km eggs as well as the Pokemon that already hatch from them will be Rockruff and these Rockruff hatch from these eggs will have a chance to evolve into Dusk Form Lycanroc. In Field Research will be Hisuian Growlithe, Hisuian Sneasel and Rockruff. There will be a web store bundle available for $5 featuring 2 premium battle passes, 2 remote raid passes and 2 super incubators. And there will be an identical bundle available in the in-game shop for $5 199 poker coins. So that's it for the details, let's have a look at some tips to help you make the most of the event. So with most of the bonuses for this event being focused on buddies, it is a good time to be working on getting your best buddies. If you didn't know already, increasing your friendship level with your Pokemon allows it to find items for you, assist you when catching a Pokemon, and it can even give the Pokemon a CP boost when you get to best buddy level. So it's pretty worthwhile working on some best buddies for these reasons. Additionally, doing the shiny Jirachi special research does require you to have 10 best buddies to progress through it, so this could be a good time to get that. To earn buddy hearts from some activities, you do need to feed your Pokemon enough so that it will appear on the overworld map. Once the Pokemon is on the map screen, you can get hearts for activities like walking a certain distance, doing a route together and battling together. Once on the overworld map, they will stay there for around 3 hours if you feed it berries or 6 hours if you feed it poffins. And during this event, your buddy Pokemon will stay on the overworld map for even longer than normal, so you won't have to feed them as often. This means that you can earn hearts from the overworld activities for longer periods of time without having to feed your Pokemon again. It's good to know that if you do walk a certain distance with your buddy depending on the species of Pokemon, you can earn candy and also mega energy if you've mega evolved a Pokemon of that species before. Although you don't have to have the Pokemon on the overworld map with you to earn candy and mega energy, getting more hearts with a Pokemon in a certain period of time can put it in the excited state where the distance you need to walk to get candy is reduced. The excited state also allows you to get more hearts with your buddy than you normally can. To get to the excited state, it does require you to get a certain amount of emotion points with the Pokemon which you get from interacting with it. Emotion points do decay decay over time so you do have to reach a certain threshold in a certain amount of time. Alternatively, instead of doing this, you can just feed the Pokemon a Poffin to get it to the excited state. This event also has increased chance for your buddy to bring you presents and souvenirs that when opened do also generate another buddy heart. So a tip for gaining buddy hearts for the battle together buddy hearts is that you can battle the team leaders by going to the Go Battle League page and scrolling down to the bottom. You can put your buddy at the front of your party, start the battle and quit as soon as the battle starts and you'll still get the buddy heart. So you can get those hearts done pretty quickly. So there are no specific XP bonuses for this event, but if you are looking to grind XP, it might be worth using Lucky Eggs to get double XP, focusing excellent throws and quick catch as many Pokemon as you can within the time limit of the Lucky Eggs. If you don't have many Lucky Eggs, then I would recommend saving them for events where there are XP bonuses, because then the Lucky Egg bonus will be able to stack with them. 
Likewise, there are no Stardust bonuses for the event, but more Lull will be spawning, and it is a boosted Stardust Pokemon, meaning it will give more Stardust per catch. More Lull will give 500 base Stardust per catch, which is five times the normal amount. If you are looking to grind Stardust during this event, then I would recommend playing Rowlet Community Day, which is taking place during the Lustrous Odyssey event on January 6th between 2pm and 5pm local time. During this event, there will be a three times Stardust bonus, so with a star piece, each Rowlet catch will get you 450 Stardust. This will be a great way to build Stardust and if you want to know more about this event and some tips for it, check out my Rowlet Community Day video that is up on the channel now. So when it comes to candy, you can use Pinup Berries to increase your candy gains and you can also Mega Evolve a Pokemon of the same type as the Pokemon you're catching to increase the amount of candy, Candy XL and XP you get per catch. And as there are many different types spawning for this event, there isn't really a Pokemon you can Mega Evolve that will cover the majority of spawns, so I would recommend checking out the Pokemon Worth Catching section coming up later on in this video so you know which Pokemon you you might want to focus and therefore which mega evolution you want to do. So with that said, let's have a look at which Pokemon are worth catching during this event. So Ghastly will be available and it is worth catching because Mega Gengar is the best Ghost and Poison type raid attacker in the game. Gengar is also ranked 74 in the Ultra League. Eevee will be available and some of its evolutions are worth getting. Firstly, Umbreon is a decent Pokemon in Go Battle League, being ranked 69 in the Great League and 91 in the Ultra League. It's also good to note that Umbreon will be appearing in the wild itself as well, although it will be rarer than Eevee, but it is a good chance to get a PvP IV Umbreon with wild encounters having no IV floor. And if you do catch Umbreon itself, you will be skipping the evolution process. Process. Another evolution that is worth going after is Glaceon because it is a top 10 ice type raid attacker and likewise Sylveon is good to go for because it is a top 10 fairy type raid attacker and is ranked 96 in the Master League. So Teddy Ursa will be available during this event and Ursaluna is a decent Pokemon in the Master League being ranked 38. Remember you can only evolve Ursaring into Ursaluna when there is a full moon active. So another notable wild encounter is Fomantis because Lorantis is decent in the Great League being ranked 50. And as I mentioned before, Morlul will be available and always worth catching for the boosted 500 Stardust it gives per catch. Hisui and Sneasel will be available in field research and Sneasler is a notable Pokemon for Go Battle League. It is ranked 202 in the Great League but also ranked 88 in its shadow form. In the Ultra League it's ranked 82 and 60 in its shadow form and in the Master League it's ranked 98 in its regular form and 72 as a shadow. So Rockruff will be available from 2km eggs, 7km eggs and in field research and it will be worth going after if you are looking to get the new Dusk form of Lycanroc. So these are the Pokemon that are worth going going after in the wild, in research and in eggs, but which Pokemon are worth raiding? When it comes to the 1 star raids, Rhyhorn is available and it could be worth raiding because Rhyperior is a strong rock type raid attacker and a decent ground type raid attacker as well. It's also good to note that the shadow version of Rhyhorn is currently available from the ground team Rocket Grunt and Shadow Rhyperior is better than its regular form as a raid attacker, so it's worth going for Shadow Rhyhorn as well. Rhyperior is also ranked 59 in the Master League where it is ranked higher in its regular form, so both the regular and the shadow versions of Rhyhorn are worth going for. Like I mentioned previously, Hisui and Sneasel is worth going for because Sneasler is decent in Go Battle League, but it's good to note that the 10-10-10 IV floor of raids and research isn't the best for PvP IV spreads that it requires for the Great and the Ultra League. Rockruff is also available in 1 star raids, but I would recommend getting it from eggs and from research instead of using a raid pass on it. In 3 star raids, Lapras will be available and it's not a bad Pokemon in the Ultra League being ranked 106. Aerodactyl is another good raid boss that could be worth going for because Mega Aerodactyl is a top rock type raid attacker. So for the 5 star raid bosses, Zerkatree is currently the second best electric type raid attacker and the best non-shadow electric type raid attacker overall. So Buzzwall is decent in Go Battle League, it's currently ranked 108 in the Great League, 41 in the Ultra League and 26 in the Master League. Feromosa is currently the second best overall bug type raid attacker and it is the best bug type raid attacker overall in terms of DPS. So of these three I would recommend focusing on Buzzwall if you play PvP and recommend Zerkatry for raid attacking mainly because electric is a more meta relevant type than bug. That's not to say Feromosa isn't worth raiding because it is a very high DPS bug type that could be decent for your bug type raiding team. When it comes to Therry and Tornadus, it has no meta relevance in PvP, but it might be worth raiding because with Bleak Wind Storm, it will be a top 10 non-mega, non-shadow flying type attacker. For the mega raids, Mega Ampharos is a top 10 electric type raid attacker, so not bad if you need an electric type mega, but it is generally a lower priority for your raid passes. When it comes to Mega Medicham, it doesn't have much meta relevance itself, but Medicham is ranked 10 in the Great League, but its perfect PvP IVs are 5, 15, 15 which would require trading to achieve because of the 10 10 10 IV floor of raids. As well as the Lustrous Odyssey event, there are other events going on during January, but are they worth playing? If you want to know more about these events, check out these videos next.